Hey, this is Matt once again. Welcome back to another review. There's another paid request this time from one of my dear friends, brothers from another mother's, Efri. Thank you so much for that, man. And for those interested in requesting pretty much any type of video or topic, randomness, out of blueness, ranking list, commentary, whatever it may be, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. Now, this is for a film that has two titles, Self-Defense and Siege. Uh, Siege, I would say, is the better title. And actually had, to me, the better poster. So I'll probably use that one. But it's a Canadian exploitation film from 1983. The best way I would put it is Canada's version of Assault on Precinct 13. Now, is that anywhere as good? Does that have John Carpenter directing? He had a great cast, and it really is tense, and it's exciting, and... That's how you work with a small budget and a satisfying, again, tense, suspenseful, lightning-in-the-bottle quality movie. A Song of Priest of 13, I love. It's one of my favorite films of the 70s. But this does have a nice, grim atmosphere. It has a really creepy score, because the score is like a intense slasher movie type of score and this is a movie that at times you're wondering who's going to live and who's going to die and while the acting is not for the some of it is fine some of it is meh could be a lot better it's not wall wall action it's not death wish 3 type of action i would say even a song prison 13 has a bit more action but it does, especially in the last 30, 40 minutes, it definitely cranks up the tension and you do feel like one of these people stuck in this apartment building while these bad guys try to get in. And <clears throat> How do I put it? When it starts, it's, it's kind of an intense cat and mouse ride. Which was surprising. It was very surprising. Now I know there are two versions of the film. One. Which is probably the one you'll find more. It adds like about 9-10 minutes. To establish the main characters a little bit more. But I. I say a little bit more. Because it's not like you get to know the characters a lot. Uh, one. Is, I liked him the most. Tom Nardini. He was in this film, Cat Blue, back in the day. He, uh, he was my favorite in the film. Him and this girl teach a couple blind people. Uh, one of them is actually Teeth Knight. He was the big guy in Meatballs, trying to do the hot dog contest. He was also the big guy in the original My Bloody Valentine, who got killed with the nail gun to the head. That was another Canada movie. In fact, both of them might have been Canada movies, but I know My Bloody Valentine was, so... Chief Knight definitely popped up from time to time. I think Sally since then he's passed away. But he's not in the film too much. Uh, the villains are definitely despicable. And the acting is not top notch. But they are despicable villains by their actions. It, it's. At times it has that grim factor. And it, again the, the score. Very horror film type of score. Which was nice to see in this action film capacity. I say action, I would say more thriller. More of a thriller type of capacity. Now the set of the film, it, it takes place in Canada actually. I, I, Nova Scotia? I think it takes place in Nova Scotia where there's a police strike. So this group of people called the New Order, not NWO, New World Order, it's the New Order. They don't like people that's unlike them, so they go to a gay bar. And the gay bar is just a regular bar, just people dancing, having fun. They don't go over the top and be lavish. It's just a bar. That's it. But the New Order are pieces of shit. They call them all sorts of names. They fuck with the owner. That's daily kill them. They don't know what to do. Bit of a grizzly way because the guy falls on like a broken bottle. I imagine a glass bottle if it was broken here. So imagine 
if a bottle, glass bottle was here and then the jagged edge is around and you fall on that, it's like, eee. So they don't know what to do, so they call their boss. And the boss pretty much go tie him up. And one by one, he's killing him with this silenced pistol and like a pillow or whatever. But then one guy's able to escape. And he's able to get to this apartment building with, again, Tom Nardini, our lead, the girl, two blind people who are their, the students. One of them is Keith Knight. And then also this neighbor who likes to sneak into the other's apartment through the bathroom the bathroom mirror as if he was Candy Man. <laughs> but like that guy was fine. I think his name was Chester. Was me, like the acting the blind guy that's not Keith Knight, but the other guy, which he looked almost like the guy in Christine, Keith Gordon. It wasn't Keith Gordon, and Keith Gordon was a better actor, but at a quick glance it looked like Keith Gordon. <laughs> That guy wasn't the best actor. Some of the villains, I don't know if I want to say they're hamming it up a bit. The gunshots that the bad guys are using sometimes remind me of, uh, I, I guess it's trying to mimic Silencer. But sometimes they sound like a sci-fi movie. Pew, 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 pew. Well, pew, 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 pew. Uh, just the way it's done, I'm like, it's something that I would see in... What was that movie? Warriors of the Lost World. Or Robert Genty. With that sound effect that guys pew, 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 pew. I was ready for a motorcycle to yell out, bingo, bingo, bingo. So, you know, there's little things here and there, but it does take a bit to build this up. But, again, it does at least still create this dark atmosphere that I thought was pretty nicely done for a low-budget movie. And for a film that I've never even heard of, this is a bit of a welcome surprise. This is a bit of a welcome surprise, I will admit. It was better than I thought it would be. Because one of the people get killed, they realize something's going on, and then... I say the last 30, but I would say like the second half of the film, that's when it becomes this tab mouse bit that doesn't really let up. They're pinned down, the bad guy's over there, they have to dodge the bullets, they have to figure out how many people are out there, the other blind guy's listening, okay, I have to hear this many footsteps and this many pairs of feet. There's one bad guy, like a sniper, keeping them down. Uh, the neighbor knows a little bit about making traps, so they make some traps. Nothing as extravagant as like Death Wish 3. Like you don't have traps of, like with the knife. Or the, the trap. What's that? It's a tooth. You know, it's nothing like that, but there's a couple little traps here and there. You don't get a lot of character development, I will say. But at least the characters seem decently smart. At least they seem not as dumb as a typical movie like this would be. Like the last half of the film, the characters are behaving, for the most part, as sensible as one can be. At least compared to a lot of other films I've seen. And... That definitely has the Assault on Priest in 13 feel to it. Again, it's not as much style or as much smoothness as John Carpenter's film, but I would say if you like Assault on Priest in 13, this is definitely worth a watch. It's like a nice successor to that film. Canada style. So like I said, Tom Nardini... Does a good job as the... You know, I liked him as the lead. Like I say, you don't have a lot of character development, but... You you get to know him... Well, I get to, Because they're not being the biggest of dumbasses, because they're having a little bit of sense, it makes me easier to root for them. The bad guys... There may be not a lot to distinct... Really, the big distinguishing of the bad guys is just their look... 
because they all try to act the same. Well, that's not true. There's maybe one that's a little bit more freaked out than the others, but... I'm trying to think what to do without giving it away. I would say this. If you could deal with some, at times, a bit off acting from some of the side characters. If you know that this is more of a low budget, so you're not going to see the Michael Bay movies. I, mean, I would say even a song pre 13 has more of a style. Because of John Carpenter, the way he used the wide screen, the way... I think that cast is a bit stronger of a cast as a whole. He's got Austin Stoker, Darren John. Like, that cast is stronger than this cast. But like I said, the lead guy and some others are fine. The the second half does with the score and the the look of the film and the fact that you have this police strike so they can't get help no matter what. And there's some usage of bow and arrow. There's some usage of traps like a little rocket. Homemade rocket. A uh, little bit of trap to fry someone. Got a headshot in there. Like, you have some stuff happening. And like I said, it becomes a nice, well, not a grim horror feel type of survival movie in the second half. And again, I thought that kept going at a good enough pace. I wasn't bored. I'm like, man, okay, this is this is kind of intense. This is nicely done, nicely uh, directed. Not bad movie. Not bad. And, yeah, I would say if you like those kind of movies, to self-defense, you look at the poster of self-defense, there's like two people with guns on either way, it looks kind of like a cheap Death Wish knockoff. Siege, in that poster, the way the atmosphere is in the poster is kind of the movie. Like, in that horror feel. And the score is like something out of a... Uh, the store of like the mutilator or maniac or something just a very intense store which fits well with the that's right it's like it felt like man who anybody could die and man who's next and what's going to happen and you know, the ending for the budget they had worked well for what it needed to do what it needed to be like I said, I wish they had a little bit more budget to have a bit more spectacle. But it just, you know, it is what it is. But, uh, yeah. It's a, like I said, if you like a song for in 13, um, this is, like, it's funny. This is more intense than the song for in 13 remake. Which had a lot more money behind it. So... Maybe if it had more spectacle, it would lose a bit of its intensity. So if that's the case, then maybe it works to keep it as is. Just like the Song of Reason 13 remake is not the worst remake ever. I'm just not a fan of it. Because the original is much better. But I just I did find it funny that that movie has a lot more money behind it. But this low-budget Canadian film had that intense... When they're trapped in that apartment, and it's like they're trying to go around to make sure they're secure and that will we make it mentality you could feel along with those characters what that situation could be like and I thought that was a pretty decent accomplishment for a film I never heard of so yeah pretty decent film Siege or Self Defense whichever one is it pretty decent I think it, does, it did get a Blu-ray recently I want to say Maybe Vinegar Syndrome? Maybe? I can't remember, but... Yeah, this is a decent one. So, with that said, uh, thanks for watching, take care, and we will see you guys later. Bye-bye.